My name is Gary Zaloga, and today I will be discussing advances in lipid emulsions, emergence of clinolipid. This is part two of a three-part series. In part one, I discussed biological functions and nomenclature for fatty acids. In this part, part two, I will discuss immune effects of fatty acids. In part three, I will discuss clinical results and implications of using an olive oil-based lipid emulsion, conflicts of interest. I was a previous employee of Baxter Healthcare between 2006 and 2016. Currently, I am a consultant for Baxter Healthcare. On this slide, I have listed the three major classes of unsaturated fatty acids across the top of the slide. The N6 PUFAS, or N6 polyunsaturated fatty acids. The N3 PUFAS, or N3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. And the N9 MUFAS, or N9 monounsaturated fatty acids. Examples of N6 PUFAS are linoleic acid and arachidonic acid. Examples of N3 PUFAS are DHA and EPA. Examples of N9 MUFAS are oleic acid. Along the left side of the slide, I've listed major categories of immune function. Inflammation, cellular immune functions, and oxidation potential. References for the table are provided below the table. In general, N6 PUFAS, which are rich in soybean oil, may stimulate or in some cases suppress inflammation and suppress cellular immune responses. N3 PUFA, rich in fish oil, suppress both inflammation and cellular immunity. In contrast, N9 MUFA, rich in olive oil, have much smaller effects upon inflammation and cellular immunity and are considered neutral. Oxidation potential relates to the number of double bonds, which are molecular sites for oxidation. N9 MUFA have low oxidation potential, while linoleic acid and arachidonic acid, N6 PUFAs, and DHA and EPA, N3 PUFAs, have moderate to high oxidation potentials. Importantly, products of lipid oxidation may damage tissues within the body. A variety of studies indicate that N6 PUFAs are immunosuppressive. There are decreases in lymphocyte proliferation, cytotoxic killer cell generation and function, chemotaxis, and phagocytosis. There is also prolongation of graft survival in animal transplant models. Anti-inflammatory and immune suppressive effects of fish oils, high in DHA and EPA, form the basis for treatment of patients with chronic inflammatory diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease, atherosclerosis, and systemic lupus. Is inflammation good or bad? Importantly, these are essential biologic functions for human survival. In general, they are beneficial for our response to injury and infection. However, there may be some circumstances where these responses contribute to progressive disease and inhibition or suppression of the responses may be beneficial. Gentile has reviewed inflammation and immune suppression in an article in 2012. This slide contains a number of statements from their review. This review points out that the pro-inflammatory phase of injury is short-lived and followed by a much longer anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive phase. The authors suggest that therapy 
should not target the exaggerated inflammation, but rather prevent or restore immune function. Gentel goes on to state, there have been nearly 150 clinical trials of biologic response modifiers. Most testing agents that attempt to block this early pro-inflammatory response. All but one of these studies failed to demonstrate efficacy. Anti-inflammatory approaches to sepsis have failed because of both conceptual and technical difficulties. Treatments initiated hours after the onset of symptoms have missed the early inflammatory mediator release and the initiation of inflammatory cascades. Our current emphasis is no longer targeting exaggerated pro-inflammation, but identifying mechanisms that drive prolonged immunosuppression and searching for new therapies that prevent it or restore immune function. What are lipid emulsions? Lipids are not soluble in water or the bloodstream. The body transports lipids in water-soluble forms as part of chylomicrons and lipoproteins. Lipid emulsions are composed of triglycerides from natural oils that are emulsified with phospholipids and water to form micelles that are size comparable to chylomicrons and soluble in the blood. It is important to note that the biologic effects of fatty acid mixtures as found in lipid emulsions are unpredictable. Mixtures of fatty acids have different effects from individual fatty acids. Fatty acids interact with each other through different pathways. There may be physical competition for integration, metabolism, and access to enzymes. Fatty acids may have both synergistic and antagonistic features, depending on the circumstances. Fatty acid effects may depend upon the form of delivery of the fatty acids. For example, phospholipids versus triglycerides versus free fatty acids. Fatty acid effects are dose dependent. Fatty acid effects are disease dependent. Fatty acid effects are also patient dependent. The clinical effects of fatty acid mixtures require clinical trials. When we search the literature regarding effects of 100% soybean oil emulsions, we note that they have been associated with excess delivery of linoleic acid in omega-6 PUFA. The amounts are much greater than that required to meet essential fatty acid requirements. Excess inflammation. Cellular immune suppression. High delivery of phytosterols, which have been linked to parental nutrition-associated liver disease. Increased infections. And hepatobiliary dysfunction. Soybean oil-based lipid emulsions were the first commercially viable lipid emulsions on the market for human use. Due to their undesirable effects, alternative lipid emulsions were manufactured. One of these is clinolipid, composed of 80% olive oil, low in omega-6 PUFA and high in omega-9 MUFA, and 20% soybean oil. The soybean oil supplies the requirements for linoleic acid and essential fatty acid. Clinolipid is indicated in adults for providing a source of calories and essential fatty acids for parenteral nutrition when oral or enteral nutrition is not possible, insufficient, or contraindicated. Limitations. Clinolipid injection is not indicated for use in pediatric patients because there is insufficient data to demonstrate that clinolipid injection provides sufficient amounts of essential fatty acids in this population. The omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid ratio in clinolipid injection has not been shown to improve clinical outcomes compared to other intravenous lipid emulsions. Warning. Deaths in premature infants after infusion of intravenous lipid emulsions have been reported in the medical literature. Autopsy findings included intravascular fat accumulation in the lungs. 
preterm infants and low birth weight infants have poor clearance of intravenous lipid emulsion and increased free fatty acid plasma levels following lipid emulsion infusion. This slide lists the primary fatty acids found in intralipid, a soybean oil based lipid emulsion, and clinolipid, a lipid emulsion composed of 80% olive oil and 20% soybean oil. Note the high linoleic acid content of the soybean oil lipid emulsion. Note the lower linoleic acid content with higher oleic acid content of the olive oil based lipid emulsion. This slide demonstrates the differences in the major fatty acid classes in soybean and olive soybean oil based lipid emulsions. Note the high MUFA content of the olive soybean mixed lipid emulsion. On the other hand, note the high PUFA content of the soybean oil based lipid emulsion. In conclusion, fatty acids have different effects upon inflammation and cellular immunity. In general, omega 6 PUFA, high in soybean oil, stimulate or suppress inflammatory responses and suppress cellular immune functions. N9-MUFA, high in clinolipid, are neutral upon inflammation and cellular-mediated immunity. As a whole, inflammation and immune functions are essential biological activities required for survival and recovery from illness. Clinicians should be careful in using agents with immune suppressive effects in patients with underlying immune suppression. Clinolipid is composed of 80% olive oil and 20% soybean oil. The mixture has a low omega-6 PUFA content, but enough to meet essential fatty acid requirements. In part three, we will discuss clinical study results using clinolipid and clinical questions regarding the use of lipid emulsion. Clinolipid injection is indicated in adults for providing a source of calories and essential fatty acids for parenteral nutrition when oral or enteral nutrition is not possible, insufficient, or contraindicated. Limitations. Clinolipid injection is not indicated for use in pediatric patients because there is insufficient data to demonstrate that clinolipid injection provides sufficient amounts of essential fatty acids in this population. The omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid ratio in clinolipid injection has not been shown to improve clinical outcomes compared to other intravenous lipid emulsions. Warning, deaths in premature infants after infusion of intravenous lipid emulsions have been reported in the medical literature. Autopsy findings included intravascular fat accumulation in the lungs. Preterm infants and low birth weight infants have poor clearance of intravenous lipid emulsion and increased free fatty acid plasma levels following lipid emulsion infusion. The use of clinolipid injection is contraindicated in patients with the following. One, known hypersensitivity to egg or soybean proteins, the lipid emulsion, and or excipients. Two, severe hyperlipidemia or severe disorders of lipid metabolism. The following are important risk information regarding the use of clinolipid. Stop infusion immediately and treat patient accordingly if signs or symptoms of a hypersensitivity or allergic reaction develop. Monitor for signs and symptoms of fat overload, essential fatty acid deficiency, and infections, including laboratory test results such as leukocytosis and hyperglycemia, and frequent checks of the parenteral access device. Carefully monitor severely undernourished patients and slowly increase their nutrient intakes while avoiding overfeeding to prevent refeeding complications. Frequent clinical and laboratory determinations are necessary throughout treatment.
monitor fluid status closely in patients with pulmonary edema or heart failure. Content of vitamin K may counteract anticoagulant activity. Clinolipid injection contains no more than 25 micrograms per liter of aluminum. There is an increased aluminum toxicity risk in patients with impaired kidney function, including preterm infants. Parenteral nutrition associated liver disease has been reported in patients who receive parenteral nutrition for extended periods of time, especially preterm infants. Monitor liver function tests. If patients develop liver test abnormalities, consider discontinuation or dose reduction. Reduce doses of clinolipid injection and monitor serum triglyceride levels in patients with serum triglyceride concentrations above 400 milligrams per deciliter. The most common adverse drug reactions reported during clinolipid injection clinical trials were nausea and vomiting, hyperlipidemia, hyperglycemia, hypoproteinemia, and abnormal liver function tests.